Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we're going to be creating some farmhouse decor DIYs using Dollar Tree items. I hope you find tons of inspiration in today's video and enjoy each one of the projects. For our first project we're using these stove burner covers from Dollar Tree that come two in a pack. For this project we will be using the smaller one. We're also going to use this metal home sign from Dollar Tree. Once I remove the hanger, I'm going to fill in that hole with some plastic wood putty filler. You could fill it in with caulk or wood filler, whatever you have on hand. Allow it to dry and then sand that down smooth. We're going to head outside and use Krylon Fusion Paint and Primer in one in the color Metallic Copper. We're going to give the stove burner cover two thin coats on each side and then using Krylon Fusion's all-in-one paint and primer in the color matte black, I will give the metal home sign one coat just on the top. Once this has dried, we're going to flip it over and on the outside rim of the stove burner cover, I'm going to use one of Dollar Tree's sponge applicators dip that into some black chalk paint and then go around just the rim of the cover once that dries we're going to attach our home sign to the center of the stove burner cover using e6000 and that's going to give it a nice permanent hold since both of these are metal pieces and then i'm going to add just a couple of dots of hot glue to hold it in place until that e6000 sets up once i have that centered and it is pressed firmly and it's not going to move, I'm going to flip that over and create a hanger on the back using two pieces of black ribbon, some hemp cord, E6000, and I'll place the ends of the hemp cord into the E6000 and then add some hot glue at the top and bottom of each side and then apply the ribbon over top and this will give it a nice strong hanger on the back. For our second project, we're going to use the larger of the two stove burner covers. And we're going to take that outside and give it two coats of the matte black spray paint on both sides. Then I'm using this metal chicken from Dollar Tree. I used this previously to cut the outline of a piece of fabric. And so if you guys watch that video, you'll know that I spilled soap all over it. So that's why it's discolored. But I'm going to fill those holes in just like we did on project number one and sand those down. Then I'm using these oval wood shapes. These come in an assorted pack from Hobby Lobby and they measure two and seven eighths of an inch by two and one eighth of an inch. I'm going to sand each of those down because the outside of it is very rough. And then I'll take these outside and spray paint the chicken with two coats of the copper spray paint as well as two coats on the eggs, including those outside edges. Using some black chalk paint and that small Dollar Tree sponge applicator, I'm going to go around the entire outline of the chicken as well as each one of the eggs. This is going to give it some definition and really make each of these pieces stand out. It's also going to give it a little bit more of a rustic look. I'm going to take three of the tumbling tower pieces and attach these to the back of the chicken so that it will sit up off of our sign and will match the width of the eggs. To apply this, I am using E6000 as well as a little bit of hot glue. That E6000 is just going to hold it there and make it really sturdy and not come off. Then we can grab our stove burner cover and lay out our design. So I'm going to place the chicken closer to the top and then the three eggs at the bottom. I want the feet of the metal chicken to rest on two of the eggs and then I can place that center egg right on top. Once I know where I want everything to be, I'm going to remove everything but those two eggs so I'll know exactly where to place them. Again, I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue to secure each one of these down. And now that I have those eggs in place, I'll be able to glue the chicken down and rest the feet on top of those two eggs. 
then I can apply the third egg and I wanted it to look like the hen was laying on the eggs. So that's why I'm covering up the feet. Then we're gonna create a hanger on the back just like we did with project number one using some hemp cord, E6000, hot glue, and some ribbon. If you're enjoying today's video and you haven't done so already, I would love for you to become a part of the community by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video. To all my current subscribers, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you'd like to visit me on my other social media accounts, all those links are in my description box below. Before we get started on our next project, I want to tell you about a company called Yeedy. They make robot vacuums. This is something I've wanted for several years, so when they reached out to me about about their Promax vacuum, I was excited to give it a try. What sets this vacuum apart from others is that not only does it vacuum, it also has a mopping feature. It will run for over 200 minutes on a single charge. Before cleaning, it tells you exactly how to set it up and download the app. The first couple of times you run the vacuum, it will map out your home, so leave doors open for rooms you want to be included in the map. It will vacuum while scanning these areas. It also gets into very hard to reach areas. Once the mapping process has finished, you can set boundaries for the machine to avoid when mopping. Once you fill the reservoir with water and dampen the mop pad, you can insert this into the machine and it detects the mop pad and will avoid the boundaries you've set for it. In this case, it's avoiding the carpet. While in the mopping mode, you can check the level of water on your app on your phone. And when it is in the vacuum mode, you can change the settings from a standard vacuum to a max vacuum. You can even set up a cleaning schedule for areas in your home. If you've been thinking of purchasing a robot vacuum, I highly recommend the Yeedy. It is well worth it. I will have a link in my description box below for this model on Amazon, and I'll also have it listed in my Amazon store. It saves me so much more time, and it is such a great help. If you already have a robot vacuum, let me know in the comments down below and which model you have. Now let's get back to crafting. Project number three, we're using this eight by 10 picture frame from Dollar Tree. Remove the picture insert, and we're gonna use this as a guide on this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby that has this beautiful herringbone pattern on it. I'm just gonna trace that out once I have that design lined up, cut it down. We're gonna remove the border from the inside of the picture frame if yours has one, as well as the glass. Then we can place our scrapbook paper down, reinsert the glass that's gonna give it a nice sturdy backing, replace the backing into the picture frame. Using this galvanized word from Dollar Tree, I was so excited to find this, as well as these removable stickers that sort of look like metal. We're gonna take these outside, give them two coats of the matte black spray paint and allow them to thoroughly dry. And I just left the houses on the backing. It just made it easier to spray paint. Then you can line everything up and figure out your design. I decided to go ahead and put the word at the top and all of the houses down at the bottom. Once you have your placement, we're going to attach each of these using hot glue. It's such an easy project, but I love the outcome. I think this piece is absolutely beautiful.
project number four, I finally found the cathedral arches at Dollar Tree. I was so excited. I'm going to remove the sign from the front and keep that because I will be putting this back on. But I did take some sandpaper because it had some rough edging on the inside, sanded that down as well as the front. Once I wipe that down, I'm going to take it outside, give it one coat of the matte black spray paint, and make sure you get in all of those grooves. Using this 5x7 wood piece from Dollar Tree, again, those outside edges are super rough, so I took some fine grit sandpaper and went over all of that, wiped the debris down. Then I'm going to use Waverly's Antique Wax, apply this with a brush, and then using a wet paper towel, blend it all in and kind of lighten it up. And as you're blending and it is lightening up, that wood grain really shows through. This is beautiful. I love the design on this piece. Now, once that dries, we're going to take our cathedral arch and apply the sign back to the center. Now, it only had one little dot of hot glue, so I made sure to apply a little bit more glue and get it centered and secured so none of the pieces pop up. Then this has corners at the end and then the second set of corners. We're going to attach our arch on the outside edges of each of those corners. And I'm using E6000 to make sure it stays and a little bit of hot glue just to hold it temporarily. Line it up with those two corners and press firmly and keep it straight. So it's gonna look something like this. Then using a glass votive candle holder from Dollar Tree, you can get that in a pack of four for $1.25. And then I'm using some greenery that I already had on hand. This bundle came from Hobby Lobby. I cut a couple of stems off and I'm gonna overlap them and then bend them around to make a circle or kind of look like a wreath to go around the bottom of our votive. To hold it together, I'm gonna use some floral wire and wrap it really tightly as I'm overlapping them. And then make sure that you tuck your floral wire down so you don't scratch anything or cut yourself when you are picking this up. I'm going to continue to do that on the other side. And then some of the pieces that are kind of sporadically laying around, I will overlap them on the other pieces and just use a small piece of floral wire to hold it together. Then I can set my votive candle holder down in there, use one of Dollar Tree's LED votive candles, and then set this on top of our beautiful candle holder. Project number five, we're using another cathedral arch. Remove the sign and save it for later. Again, we're going to sand down in between those arches to get all of those rough edges off. And I'm using an 8 by 10 picture frame that I already had on hand and the glass is already removed. Although both of the pieces are white, they're a different white. So I'm going to take them both outside and using Krylon Fusions, paint and primer in one in the color matte white. I'll give each one of these two coats so that now they will match. Using the backing of the picture frame and some faux leather from Dollar Tree, they have black, brown, and white. I'm going to use this to cover the backing. I'm going to apply some hot glue around the border only of the backing of the picture frame and then I can flip this over and set it directly on top of the back of the faux leather. Press firmly and make sure all of the edging have sealed. And then I could take my scissors and cut the excess off. Now you could certainly use poster board or scrapbook paper, but I wanted to use this leather because of the beautiful texture it has on it. Then I can apply this back into the picture frame and then we'll take our cathedral arch and reapply the sign to the front. But before we attach our arch to the leather on the picture frame, we're gonna remove the hanger from the back so that it will sit flat, but we're gonna reinsert that screw so that the two pieces will stay together. Then using some E6000 and hot glue, we can attach this to the center of our picture frame directly to the leather. And I love how this piece turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. I 
I hope you enjoyed today's projects and found tons of inspiration. And if you have a favorite, let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care and I will see you next time.